Hello everybody, this is Granny. Today we're going someplace that's a big tourist attraction for the people here in the Pacific Northwest. In the early 1990s, there was a TV program called Northern Exposure. The program won the Golden Globe in 1993 and it got 39 Emmy nominations. So it was very popular. I, maybe you remember it. It was supposed to have taken place in a place called Sicily, Alaska. And it actually took place in Roslyn, Washington. And that's where we're going today. Roslyn is about 100 miles from where we live. So we'll be going down Interstate 90 and across Snoqualmie Pass to get there. I hope you'll enjoy the scenery along the way. Nearly there now. Here's our exit. Roslyn. Roslyn straight, straight ahead. Like many small towns in the Pacific Northwest, Roslyn was founded on coal and timber. Between 1886 and 1929, immigrants arrived from foreign countries, Italy, Poland, Slovakia, Germany, Lithuania, Slovenia, Serbia, and Croatia, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, all were part of the labor force here in Roslyn. Many uh, of the ancestors of these original workers still live here. For fans of the old Northern Exposure TV show, here's the brick. And sorry guys, but it doesn't look like that on the inside. And you won't be seeing hauling, tending bar, and Shelly taking orders in there either. But there's lots more to see, so let's get to it. We're going to start off today by stopping at the candy store to get some, what else, candy. My husband really likes candy. It looks as if this building was once a bank. And here's a little park area. There were a lot of tourists here today. The next building was once uh, Dr. Fleshman's office, but now it's a gift shop. This neat old truck added some historic charm. And don't forget to stop at the Roslyn Museum. Roslyn is quite proud of their coal mining past. Roslyn's coal production peaked in the uh, 1910 at about 2 million tons of coal. But by 1920, the need for coal began to wane when uh, the railroad companies switched to diesel engines. The last mine closed in 1963. And here's that iconic mural that we all remember from the show. During the mid-1970s, the artist community discovered Roslyn and began to move in and start restoring the old buildings. Today, much of the town is geared towards tourism, but always with a look back at the past. This memorial was built to honor uh, 45 miners who were killed in the worst accident in Washington State mining history. And here's where the Chris in the Morning radio show originated from. Northern Exposure was not the only thing filmed here. Back in 1979, a movie starring Dick Van Dyke called The Runner Stumbles was filmed here at this church. It was based on a true story of a priest in 1927 in Michigan who was accused of murdering a nun. In 2014, The Man in the High Castle was also filmed here. 
I've got to admit I've never watched that one. But it involved an alternate ending to World War II. In 1886, when coal was being mined here, uh, the Northern Pacific Railroad ran through. The tracks are long gone, but now it's a trail system. The trail system connects the three communities of Clay Ellum, Roslyn, and Ronald. According to the map I saw here, the entire trail is only uh, 4.7 miles long. I've enjoyed showing you around Roslyn today, but now it's time for us to head back home. The structures ahead are part of a, a larger plan to, uh, by the Department of Transportation and the Wildlife Bridges Coalition to uh, build a bridge for the animals to cross the freeway. When it's complete, animals will be able to cross from one side of the freeway to the other without impeding on traffic. It'll be a win-win for both animals and people. The lake to our left is the Ketchelis Lake, and right now we're crossing the Snoqualmie Pass. Home is on the other side of those mountains. I hope you enjoyed the stories, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.